East Los Angeles is a city with so many barrios, gangs, and the majority of the people here in East Los Angeles are raised in the criminal element. These people are moving from East Los Angeles to try to escape the wars that are happening there. In Los Angeles, we have gangs such as Barrio Nuevo, White Fence, Maravilla. We have King Cobras. We have Third Street. We have Royal Soto. And then within Los Angeles, we have the Bloods. We have the Crips. These gangs originated many years ago. These gangs go back to the time of the Zoot Suits. And our heritage is very proud of the Zoot Suit days. Our fathers were gang members, our grandfathers were gang members, and it goes farther into that. It goes all the way into the time of Mexico, into the days of the Aztec Indians. Within the prison walls is a group of people who are so-called shot callers. And these shot callers have control of all the barrios and gangs in within Los Angeles, San Bernardino, and all of Southern California. In East Los Angeles, there's no hope or chance for the people to change or to accept changes because of the pain that we have been going through for many years. Oh, my mom got shot six times during a drug deal. Uh, my, my youngest brother's doing 40 years of uh, double shooting. Uh, my other brother, he's uh, got picked up for a double homicide and, and then for another homicide. So My youngest sister was also a gang member. So it, it came from generation to generation. I, my youngest, my, my youngest, uh, my oldest son is doing time in prison right now. So it's like uh, something that was handed down, the, the lifestyle, the way of living. It was handed down to me from my parents. And I was uh, handing it down right to my kids. Me, myself, they say I had to grow up being strong, you know, because my mom, my dad, you know, they were, they got involved with us, with the, you know, with the M and, you know, they, they, they raised me up by using how to sling and how to, how to not to trust nobody because you can't trust no man because, you know what, they'll turn around and book you right in a minute, just like when I was in the joint, man, I had to, I couldn't trust nobody, you know. I was seeing, you know, when I was growing up, I seen my uncles, you know, like, all my uncles, my dad's brothers and shit, man. They were all into the heroin, cocaine, speed balls, all that fucked up shit, you know? Not your problem, man, because they've been doing that too, like in Quinn, Folsom, Chino. You know, they did that shit. And that's why I trip out, man. That shit wasn't just like, I wanted, you know? I seen it, so I wanted, you know, like, you know, try it too, you know? And that's what happened, you know? I got a, young, a younger brother that's 15 years old. And now he, he out here in the streets and shit. He tell me he ain't gang banging, but um, he dressed the part. And he fucking up, he go to jail, he's going to jail now. And yeah, it all started when one of my brothers got killed, you know. My brother got killed. And I didn't have no one up over me then, you know, to uh, you know, keep me from going out into the gang life. You know what I'm saying, hanging with the fellas in the street. And after he was gone, I didn't have nobody there, you know what I'm saying, to, to take me from the streets. So I just went on out there myself. I started gangbanging in 78, 77. I had a brother who was killed in 77. He was shot, gangbangers. Unfortunately, he was in a gangbang, apparently. But, um, you know, eight months ago, nine months ago, I also had another brother who was killed, you know? <laughs> right by shooting. Same right here. thing, you know? Apparently, some elder guy came by, seen a kid, shot him down. It's been around since the 40s, you know? I got a lot of family in there. Still, 
You know, I've seen a lot of my family members killed. You know, they're not in prison. Right now in Los Angeles, there seems to be a lot of tension mounting up. There are things taking place that are going to cause a major racial war between the Chicano people and the black people. And it's going to involve the Chicano gangs and the black gangs. And this came to be from within the prison walls. They transmitted to Hatchby, to Hatchby One Yard. Kitty land there, it really was Kitty land. And I stayed there for 16 months. Motherfucking bloods don't want to do nothing, you know, they were real, a lot of, lot of cowardly, this gang of bitches and a gang of busters. They really wasn't doing nothing. The white boys wasn't trying to do nothing. So our real problem was the Mexicans, you know. Them motherfuckers, them was our problem. So we tried to constantly keep our foot in their ass, you know. And we won some, but we lost some. And we won some, but we lost some. We our number Crips. Easy. That's why we're the only gang in Compton that don't get along with Crips. Only. Period. And always it's a race rise. Love race rise too, you know? My motto, you ain't no Crip, fuck you. Right now in the prison itself, it is mandatory for Chicano to make himself a weapon and carry that weapon to court and from court. Within the county jails, there is more than just tension. There is riots daily, fights. There are stabbings daily between the blacks and the Chicano people. It's the LA County Jail and um, I'm standing out here free and shit, but you know, I ain't been here since 91. Uh, it's real fuck, people die. It's nasty, your food, your food nasty. Um, murderers, rapists, child molesters, gangsters, all different type of people up in here. When, when you hear, when you hear, like like the um, like the um, the racial shit going on, you be you be in sales with with your enemy. It's like it don't make no difference. They don't care about what they do to you. Why why you here? They just. They just house you wherever they house you. That's where they house you. Where it don't make no difference if a black in with a Mexican, a Mexican in with a black or Asian, whatever and shit. They they put you in sales to kill yourself up in this motherfucker. When sticking happens in Folsom. They lock everybody down. They investigate. If it's involved just between the blacks, they lock down the blacks and everybody else out. The blacks stay in their cell. If a Mexican, if it was north and south or whatever, because nobody gang bangs in the joint. Everybody yeah. has no. From off the street, you know, everybody has to get along. From they call them busters, you know, dudes from the north. Everybody has to get along against them and the blacks, so they can't have everybody gang banging against each other. Because then all the Mexicans would be trying to kill each other, you know. See, this race thing been going on a long time with blacks and Mexicans. I had a Mexican for a bunkie. He was my friend for like three three months straight. Some drama jumped off in the weight file. We was finna get down. I turned around looking for him. You know, I was looking out for him, but I turned around. He already had a shank to my back. So that let me know what time it was right there with the race thing. From now on out, I recognized what the real was. So I've been keeping my guards up ever since. Because we have our respect. We gained our respect to get this part of the nation. Our respect comes from. We're not terrorists, like those black motherfuckers that like to shoot babies and kids and brag about it. Oh, I done shot his mama, I done shot his baby brother. They brag about shit, like we don't, we don't go for that shit. We get our respect, if somebody does something to us, we're gonna go back and do it to them, just so we can get the respect of our neighborhood and so people won't come by hitting the little kids and shit. Mexicans have always shot each other, but it hasn't been like wiping out families. It, it'll be an accident, usually, if a kid or um, a female got shot, but like the blacks, they don't care who they shoot. They'll go shoot up a whole neighborhood and won't even be the dudes they're after just to shoot up that neighborhood. Oh, that you talking about, you know what I'm saying, a pistol, this, pistol that, pistol this, pistol that. I don't need no motherfucking pistol, you know what I'm saying, to take a motherfucking win. 
You know, I take his win with my bare hand, you know. Ben Penn went to the penitentiary for the first time for another strong going robbery. And I always say, you know, if a motherfucker ain't been to 4800, he ain't been nowhere. He ain't no motherfucking crib. But that's where the real motherfuckers go. I got up to 4800, you know, uh, and there's a world within itself, you know, all the homeboys, all the sets did, you know, uh, and it's constantly raising ride tensions, you know, and we kicking and squabbling. And the first time I went to the penitentiary, I went to Tracy, California. And the first time I seen a knife it was from an essay. He had about five or six brothers. That motherfucker put in work too. For one motherfucker, he put in a gang of work. And I remember the motherfuckers transferring me to the Susanville. I mean, uh, Vacaville. Where all them sissies at. Where all them bitch ass sissies at. And I don't understand the motherfuckers. But a motherfucker like me, you know, I wasn't no small fry for my set either. I had a little, I had some juice. Like everybody else who had juice, when you put in a gang of work, you automatically gonna get your juice and your reputation, you know? So I wasn't really tripping that but it got into the full floor of things. What I really like about it is, 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 is suiting up, sagging, and, and flagging, and ragging. Taking them group flicks with the whole boy, sitting out of the yard just getting fucked up. Waiting on the motherfucker to do something. So we can get put in some work. I trip out because you know all these people say they, they've been here they've been there but when you really fucking been somewhere you gotta be here in the joint man doing your time for what you did you know and um you know a lot of us you know we did a lot of shit in our lives and you know finally we're paying for it doing our time but all you other motherfuckers out there saying that you guys do this you guys do that well you guys never did a fucking day in jail but talking about you guys are so fucking hard but you know what the hard shit is anybody in the street could have a gun and shoot you. Even a punk could do that. But I'm talking about in here, you're surrounded by motherfucking sales, you know, motherfuckers. You can't you can't run. This you can't hide in this motherfucker. We always catch you in here. And this is the place, you know, which we we'll show we really find out if you're really a fucking man, you could take the heat in here, you know, because if you can, then I don't know how the fuck you survive out in the streets, because the streets are jungles. It's not like in here, you know, in here you have these fucking cops that could fucking throw your ass in protected custody with you're a fucking PC, no good ass motherfucker, you know, to us. You're just a piece of shit, you know, just waiting for somebody to put some fucking iron in your ass and that's it, you're out of here, you know. You know, you know, that's that's some fucking, you know, nasty shit about your motherfuckers coming in, you know, and think, you know, yes, did this and that. Talk about, especially too, I hate motherfuckers when they come here. They say, oh, I did this, I did that. Man, but you're lying out your ass, man, just trying to say, to make, to for us to, you know, accept you. See, we don't accept nobody in here just because you talk. We will find out by the way you act and the way you're, you're active, the way you act in here, you know? We don't just, because there's a lot of motherfuckers that come in and say, ah, oh, I did this, I did this, try it, I did this, I robbed this, I, I beat up this. I, man, you guys are all fake out there. Don't talk about it, just, you know, we'll find out in life, you know? That's all it's about in here, you know? It's not no joke, you know what I'm saying? Folsom, to me, Folsom was an, was an eye-opener, you know? It opened my eyes to a lot of things, you know, because it's a, it's, it's, that's a shooting gallery, you know. We the little duck that's going across the little gallery, you know what I'm saying, you know, target practice, that's what you'll call it, target practice. Folsom, I'm pretty sure the guy died this way today. He got stuck in the eye with the um, pencil, but he's a child molester, they found out. And you gotta have paperwork, you kids can't say like, hey, uh, that guy's a child molester. Because it might be somebody that fucked your old lady, you know what I mean? Right. You gotta have court documented papers or... Before anybody offs you, you mean? Yeah, like if I want, I'd have to have a court transcript or a newspaper clipping or... I've seen motherfucking stabbings, motherfuckers hit each other in the neck. Motherfucking 50 pound weights dropped on motherfuckers' head. You got all of them up to the 60s and the coasters and the Grape Street Watts and uh, the PJ Watts and the Long Beach Insane's and the 20s. You know, them motherfuckers up in there, you know, 
just wasn't giving a fuck about where you was from. You know, uh, you disrespect the motherfucker, you get dealt with. And if your homeboys want to get, get up until they get dealt with too. You know, the niggas don't give a fuck about where you from or who the fuck your name was. So you had to stand up on your own. If you didn't stand up on your own, you get fucked. You know you get went up in, you know the shampoo bottles all up in you. Get tied up in the fart sacks. You know, so if you really wasn't about it, I advise you don't go up there, you know. Cause a lot, I seen a lot of motherfuckers go up there with this big old ass on their chest. You know, and come up out that motherfucker switching. I remember a motherfucker come up from Folsom. He had been had about, about eight years, you know. And he was talking his old punk ass shit about uh Folsom this and he this and he OG this. And see, later on that night, I heard that punk motherfucker hop down there hollering and crying. You know, and singing songs to my little homeboy, Chico. You know, how about if you think I'm sexy, come on, Chico, let me know. And we sit there, I laughed all motherfucking night. I just like, many you now, I'm really kind of upset because I'm all the way up here up north, which is up here in Soledad, fucking far from being down south. And it's fucked up when your family can't come and see you because, you know, it's a far fucking drive. And, uh, I'm not the type of food like to put my family through that shit, you know. When I get in, it's my fucking problem, you know. I deal with it. But anyways, um, I'm gonna let you run you down about this shit up here up north. It's fucking different, you know, because I'm really from the south, which is down over in Compton, L.A. area. Well, up here, you know, we play that north and south shit, which is, you know, if you're from fucking from Bakersfield, half of Bakersfield on up, that's considered up north. From Bakersfield on down, that's south, which you know, you know, I'm really from the south, and um, that's what the kind of bullshit we go through in here. We don't fuck with the northern because you know that's their fucking, you know, that's their fucking thing. But you know, I just fuck with the homies from the south because you know I ain't got no respect for them motherfuckers. That them fools up north, and you know up here, you know, they got them fucking terones, which is fucking black fools, and then, um, it's just like that's the kind of words we use, terones or mugres. Consider them for you know as the black race, and um, we just you know white people are come like sauna's, which is you know you know like sheets in Spanish. Each prison is like they got prisons that sometimes the busters are running, and then, but uh, the Serenos were holding down Folsom, and uh, the M is the one that runs the shit, you know Folsom. They're the ones that call the shots, and. Uh, that's who runs it. That's who runs Folsom. And uh, the level two pins and shit like that, they they ain't run by nobody. It's just like a camp. You know what I mean? They, all the dudes that are down will be in the level fours and shit. The ones that, you know, shit's really kicking out. You go to like a level two down closer to uh, the south, it's like there ain't even no dudes, no, uh, no, no busters even to fight or nothing. It's just like, like I said, it'll either be racial. It'll just be racial, really. Folsom is like the blacks hang with the black, with the Crips hang with the Crips, the Bloods hang with the Bloods, and you got, you know, the 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 the, the, with the, the Mexican mafia, you know, send the BGFs and and ABs, you know. Yeah, and another thing too, um, paying rent, man, in here. That's where a lot more folks come in here. First termers, you know, the first time in jail, you know. That's the ones we really fuck with, you know, about paying rent. You know, if we don't know you, nobody knows you for a fuck, and we take you under the wing, which, I mean, under take you under the wing is like, you're gonna be my little bitch, you know. And um, every time you get, like, your mom sending you money, sending you package, like food or whatever, that shit's gonna come to me, cause I'm keep, I'm protecting you from all these other motherfuckers taking your ass or fucking with you. And you know, you're just gonna be mine, you know. I'm gonna take care of you, I ain't gonna fuck you or nothing. And as you give me that fucking opportunity, then I might take it, you know. You got like the Crip modules up in this little area. Up in here, you got the Crip modules, you got the, the modules for the Bloods. But right now, they mixing everybody up, you know. that They just want everybody to just beat themselves and kill themselves and shit, you know. They got the Mexicans, all of them, they just putting them all together and shit, because you know. That's how they make their money, by seeing other, seeing us kill each other off and shit, and that's what they do up in here. This place is, it's, it's, it's dangerous, it's dangerous to come here. Especially if you're not no hell of a motherfucker. You, you can be a hell of a motherfucker on the streets, but when you get up in this county jail and shit, it's all gonna show they got this module called 9500, and it's like, 
500 people at one module and shit, just one module and shit, and you got motherfuckers waking up in the middle of the night with blankets over their ass, getting beat down and fucked and all that old shit, all types of shit happen up in here and shit, you know, it ain't, it ain't, this ain't TV, this is some real shit right here, you can see me right now, I've been up in this motherfucker, I'm 28 years old and I didn't put in at least eight years of my life in the county jail and shit, not counting Penn and Youth Authority or nothing, I'm just talking about the county. But I, you know, back up into the jail, you know, 4800. I like to kick it on 4800 tip because I remember when them motherfuckers trying to get me up and I didn't want to go. Scared to death. But get up in that motherfucker, you know, uh, the homeboy show a motherfucker gang of love, you know. And I was always tell my homeboy, if you're real about this shit, you know, you'll go up into that module. That module they had to break up, you know, because it was too much, too much drama up in there, you know. The gang of motherfuckers wasn't laughing out there. I'm speaking of that crib module. You know, you motherfuckers know who got ran up out of there too. So I hope when you see it, you know that it, it make you feel like a piece of shit. Cause a lot of motherfuckers can make up in the 4800. That's the crib module. That's where I like to roam, you know. Find out if your motherfucker really real about this shit. Because if you wasn't real about it, all type of shit happened to you. You get fucked, you get whooped on, they shave all the hair off your head, just humiliate your motherfucking ass. That's good for your punk ass. So if you got dead like that, that's good for you. But if you weren't supposed to be up there, no way, you know? Only the strong surviving that motherfucker. That's what I like about it. And here, like, a lot of motherfuckers, they be getting fucking stuck. You know, people think it don't happen, but yeah, it happens every day. Not every day, but every, you know, once in a while, motherfucker needs to be put in line. A fucker gets, you know, gets stuck in there, you know? If you don't get stuck, where well, motherfuckers probably put batteries in a sock, you know, like, they get two good strong stocks and put the batteries in and, you know, big ass size D batteries and fuck, you know, just go up to you and just, you know, assault your ass, beat your ass up with the motherfucking socks in the fucking sock and just, you know, hit you all over in the head, all over, you know, where you're gonna feel this shit. Cause the motherfucking police up and they don't give a fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when I was up in Folsom, you know, yeah, they do have a bunch of racist ass motherfucking white folks up there, man. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't give a fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? But you know, when I got there, the police told me, you know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna accept that. You know what I'm saying? You disrespected, you know what I'm saying? My officers. I told them, man, you just tell your motherfucking officers don't disrespect me. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck, man. You know, I'm suicidal. I don't care. I ain't got nothing to go to the streets for. If you kill me, you be doing me a favor. The guards in there, man, and the, right here in the system, man, they're fucking phony, man. Them motherfuckers, like, you give them money, man, they'll bring you anything. Just like any of you motherfuckers out there, you guys were twerking here. Motherfucker give you so much money, you bring them anything in here. As long as you're getting something out of it. Well, the same thing in here, man. They'll bring you fucking ink to tag. Fucking, fucking, um, they'll bring you heroin, fucking coke, speed, crystal, all that stupid shit, you know. K KGB, you know, that's like some drug up here up north, the ones they be using. They'll bring you anything of that. As long as you give them money, they're making some profit out of it. And you're gonna make your profit mandatory, you know? They're, they're gonna bring it in, man. These guards are crooked, man. They're fucking fake ass. See, this whole fucking system's corrupted, man. They're all fucking stupid. And they, as long as there's money involved and they're getting something out of it, they're gonna do it. They get a uniform, fuck them, you know? They, get to, they, they just got a license to kill. But here I go kill, you know? And them motherfuckers wanna lock me up for the rest of my life. You know, here they go kill, you know? And the only thing they can get killed is the police force, you know? That's the law. Should I should abide by the law? They should too. If I can get prosecuted for the same motherfucking law, they should be able to get prosecuted too. If I should get a life sentence for killing a motherfucker, they should get the same motherfucking life sentence for killing a motherfucker. And I don't just shouldn't make it difficult they wear a badge or not. And I understand, you know, it's rough out here on the police too. But if you kill a motherfucker, you should get a life sentence too. If you dump six bullets in a motherfucker. You should get six life sentences, you know? Well, I, that's, just, that's just my opinion, you know? Um, and I know a lot of other people think like that, too. If they should be able to kill a motherfucker, they should get a life sentence, too. The motherfucker they do lock up, they don't lock up, they should lock up. The motherfucker they should lock up is the, is the child molesters, and, and they let them motherfuckers walk off scot-free. The motherfucking serial killers. They let them sit on death row four or five, 15 years before killing them. They should kill them. They should kill no motherfucking Chris. Fuck them, you know what I mean? Because we do what the fuck we know how to do, you know? And we ain't no serial killers. You know, we we just 
do what we have to do on a daily basis. I seen a lot of motherfuckers get fucked. Came in straight, left out gay. Um, see a lot of people get tied up, beat, thrown off tears, getting their money took from their visit. It's nasty up here. The deputies don't give a fuck about you. And, uh, they really hate you if you're black. Let me tell you guys a little something too about the gang corner in here. When you come in here, the gang corner is mainly, he's in the reception yard, he's checking you out, want to know where you're from, if you're involved in any of the shit that goes on in the prison gangs, which is the MA and shit. They just want to check out that shit, see, you know, what's really, you know, they want to get into your files and trip out, see what, you know, you're about, you know, you're a threat to them. Not really a threat to them, but really a threat to us in the yard, you know. If you're going to threaten us, or you're going to, you know, put motherfuckers on missions and shit, you know, that's why they, they take they look at your jack and trip out and talk to you, interview you, see what you're coming from. But that's mostly the kick going gang corner's job. Is when the sticking happens or somebody gets fucked up, that's their job to check it out, investigate what happened and shit. If it was over gang or over something, and that's their job, you know. That's mostly the gang gang coordinator in here. When they cut you out, is that it? You just cut out, they don't I mean you go through any kind of evaluation, getting released. Nah, they used to in the in the old before and now it's just do your time, get you two hundred dollar gate money. And you're out of there. They used to give you a suit too, didn't they? Yeah, they don't. Uh, they send you clothes from home now. Now, if I think if you're released, they give you a some fucked up clothes from the Salvation Army that the hospital. They got friends outside and shit, so you might come home wearing polyester or whatever. Some of the guys that don't got nobody out there, that's how they have to do. It. They'll give them a set of khaki pants and khaki shirt or whatever but most guys are so glad to be out they don't give a fuck what they come out in I've been out about, I've been out about a year and 12 days and, and 42 hours. no I've been out about a year a year and a couple of weeks about a year and a couple of weeks but uh, I know what it's like to be on the street. You know what? When I was a when I was a, when I was a kid, I used to respect my elders. You know, I was you know Mexican culture. You know, you're brought up to respect your elders. You know, but now you got all these kids, 13, 14 year old kids, that go out and shoot a 40 year old mother, a 50 year old father. You know, out of little kids nowadays, the youngsters are the ones putting in the work. They're the ones. Lasting. It's always it's the little kids because the little kids are the ones that ain't gonna get the time, right? And me, I'm over 18, so you know if, they, if I get busted with the gun, you know if I get busted with the gun that's hot, it has a couple of murders, I can go on me, and I'm gonna do hard time. You know I'm gonna go to the pen, you know. So what I do, so what I do, you know what I do is I'll handle, I'll hand down the gun to my little homies. You know I got homeboys that are 13, 14 years old. You know I'll hand the gun down to them and I'll say, all right, you go do it. You know because I know if they get busted, they're only gonna do what two, three years. You know camp, YA, and that's it. Don't be out. You know, but if I get busted for a drive by, they might give me. Life, you know? My name is Demon from Quiet Village Pee Wee Locals, Westside Whittier. This is my homeboy Squeaky, this is my homeboy Easy. I've only been in eight months. My point of view about Whittier, about this neighborhood that I've been in so far, is that right here is crazy. It's a fucking crazy neighborhood right here. Right? Since I've been in, Whittier is not no nice city. I always thought of nice city because I was raised in you know East LA, you know. Now over here in Whittier, you know, I got in the neighborhood, got my homeboys, they recruited me, you know, it's all about recruiting, taking youngsters. No, there's not one part of the Boyle Heights that ain't little gang related, all right? Every, every part, two every, every, every two blocks, there's a neighborhood. You got one, you got our barrio, okay, my, like my barrio, we're right there on, what's it called, First Street, right? About two blocks away is East LA. You know, we don't get along with them, vatos. On the other side, no, no, on, on, on the other side, barrio, you don't, eh? the barrios around you, you don't get along with them. The next, we got the little cheese sides on the other side, you know? We got the Vergas town on the other side, you know, going down Wombat. <laughs> Then you know we got what's it called? The jelly beans, the evergreens, they can't hang with us, you know, they're on the other side of First Street. They try they try to battle with us, you know, and that's what we're battling at, you know. People associate the blacks with the Mexicans, right, we're not. They run the whole program, we run ours. And our peace treaties are going good, our talks are going good, the meetings are going good, and we're getting our people strong. You know what I mean? We're getting our race strong, and we're stopping the killing and we're uniting, and that's the way it should be. There's not a lot of gang violence coming from the bloods and the crips, you know, uh, but the media they would say in a minute, you know, it's gang related. And the first thing that comes to people's mind is bloods and crips. But it ain't the bloods and crips. 
our race is more organized and more fucking um we're more stronger man you know we gotta keep it like that in there cause we can't be weak cause it, a weak motherfucker in here will never make it and shit and yeah that racial shit is really fucked up in here in here and outside now I heard out there in the street motherfucking is us against blacks right now you know it's going to different aspects racial tension you know it's about territory on the streets today you know Mexicans wanna run shit you know uh I ain't going for none of that shit, you know? Motherfucker, and they ain't dictating a motherfucking thing to me, you know? Can't tell me where to do nothing that, you know? But, you know, that's how they want it, you know? Uh, so I guess it'd be a blood battle between us and them. Fuck it, you know? Have it come to that, fuck it, you know? Because I'm going to ride with my people. This is how it is. You don't put work in for your neighborhood. You don't do nothing for your neighborhood. You got to earn stripes, all right? It's like being in an army, right? Your neighborhood's an army. It's like saying, it's like... It's like saying nations, you know, we got the United States, Mexico, Russia and all them. That's just how it is being out here. It's like it's like a world, you know, it's like a little world right here. And we all we're all different nations except for barrios, you know. And each barrio has it's like an army and in order to, you know, it's like a sergeant, you, know, you gotta get your stripes, you know. If you know if you're in the army, you gotta you know you gotta earn your rank, right? This ivy right here represents our neighborhood. All that ivy because the jardin in English means the gardens. It used to come all the way down, but a lot of graffiti, we had to paint it over. Mm. But it used to come down all the way right here and it was all ivy. Everything was all ivy and the ivy represents the neighborhood, the bondage yeah. of the neighborhood because this is the garden, right? This is Hardin. All this represents all the homeboys and the homegirls that I've always represented this neighborhood and stuff. And we're talking about the people that have been here for years too. This, this is somebody that's been here for a long time. That's one of the homeboys, that, that's one of the homeboys' grandfathers. This right here, this represents some of the homes in the neighborhood. I was initiated into this gang, and for the initiation, I was given a 45. I was given a blue bandana. I was given a location and a time. I used to, you know, so I was, you know what I'm saying, highly active, you know what I'm saying, as a gang member, you know, as, as a pyro, you know. TV and, uh, the world that we call society out here is, is all fucked up because uh, you can watch a program and you think, you know, you, you can see a motherfucker like me walk around the street and, and think what well, he has low life, you know what I mean? A motherfucker, why don't you take, take some time to see what's happening and open your eyes, you know? You can't, you can't motherfucking, you can't walk the streets out late 2 o'clock in the fucking morning, you know what I mean? You might get hurt, but a motherfucker like me can do it because I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? I come from the ghetto, man. I, I was born and raised out here. And the gang I was running with, they're fighting with the dudes I grew up with, because it's one of the older gangs from the neighborhoods, the avenues. And I know just as many guys as there from my own neighborhood, and they're killing each other. And it's like, it's it's uh, it's madness out there, because it's out the park. You got about five about five neighborhoods in that little area fighting each other. Guys across the street, guys from Gentile, you know, we're taking a chance right here. We could get blasted at, you know, but it's all right, because we're down for ours, you know what I'm saying? It's village now, man. Yeah, we call it village war, now, right? you know, it's a war, right? Eh? And that's a war we chose to take, eh? Anyway, like I was saying, you know, God, there's a lot of new gangs coming around here around our neighborhood. Right here, it's quite good, it's pleasant ways. This is all our territory right here. It goes all the way from Broadway, from Pioneer. You know, we're big, we're crazy, we're down. We fucking hate these motherfuckers that come in and say, ah, I'm from this neighborhood, I'm from there. And then we find out, hey homie, is it your homeboy? Oh, that ain't my homeboy, man, that motherfucker, I don't even know him. And that's, you know, that's some bogus shit, man, you know. You come in thinking you're somebody, but you ain't nobody, you know. And motherfuckers in the street, same shit, you know. Motherfuckers go out there thinking they're all hard, dressing up all gangsters and shit, and then they come out like, you know, motherfuckers come, where you from? Oh, I ain't from nowhere, man, you know, I'm a game bag. And when the fuck you dress like that, you know, that's the only, if you dress hard, man, that's the only thing motherfuckers gonna think you, you representing somebody, you know. What neighborhood, you know. Motherfuckers, when they come and blast on you, they ain't gonna say, ah, oh, where you from? Oh, they shoot you, kill you, fuck it. Uh, motherfuckers find out news, oh, he was an innocent kid, but that's that's what everybody say, innocent this, innocent that. Why the fuck you dressing up gangbang, you know? If you don't want to get shot or whatever, just stay your ass, you know, dress you fucking like a casual motherfucking GQ or fucking disco dog. Don't, you know, try to come up all gangster up like you somebody, you know? And in here, you know, it's like, we, we hate that shit, you know, motherfucker. You try to come, you know, out of fucking left field, thinking, oh, man, I'm fucking the game, man. You know, I'm the shit, you know, dress up. And then just come around the yard like you're somebody, which we all know you. You don't claim nothing. You ain't nobody, you know. You're just trying to act like, just since you're in here, you're trying to make yourself look good, which, you know, you don't look good in here, you know. Ain't no bitches around here.
to look good for me. Growing up gang banging, man, it was it was it was it was fun. It was and shit. You know, robbing, stealing, shooting people, doing what you had to do to get the respect in the neighborhood and shit. And I got mine. They called me Hucklebuck. You know. And uh, a lot of my homeboys is dead now. A lot of them in jail, the ones that came up with me. It's not that many of us left. When you join a gang, you're, you inherit many, many things that come along with the gang, besides the party and the girls and the nice cars and all that. You inherit enemies, you know, that's off the top. Even though you might not know the guy, or even if you went to school with the guy, once you belong to a certain neighborhood, uh, that neighborhood's enemies all of a sudden become your enemies. I went to the penitentiary one more time. For motherfucking possessing the cells for some bitch ass, my bitch ass homeboys went and claimed they shit. You know, and um, I went, I got two years, but that wasn't shit. Two years ain't nothing, you know. You go there, motherfucker, you do a year, you come on back out, you know. So I really didn't give a fuck. So you give me five years, I can come on back out two and a half years later and do the same old shit. Drive by the morning, noon, night. I didn't give a fuck about no, that the sun went down, the sun is up, you know. If I catch them out of line, blast their ass, fuck them. You know? So let me tell you, if you want to be crazy and wear your Ben Davis, come to the east side. Geeking, come to the east side and we'll show you what gangbanging is go. about. I had this, this, this vendetta against this one girl from Lutus Park. And uh, I don't, you know, I really don't know if, I really don't know if I killed her or not. I really don't know. But I had to let my homies know that I was still down for my set. My neighborhood, the 70s, we've been out the 68, 69. We're one of the biggest gangs right now in Compton. I know that because they've thrown me in the gang room and I've seen files and we got a bunch of us. All the other gangs in Compton, they're, they're pretty big, but not as big as us. We outnumber them easily in any neighborhood. Because I'm from South Central. I'm not from the West Side. I'm from the East Side of Los Angeles, where South Central is. is. You know, now all Phillies over there in that Crenshaw district or nothing like that there. You know, the South Central where I was at, you know, 59 and Compton. You know, we had the four trays, the five trays, and we had the more punk ass villain, the more punk ass Pebble niggas. You know, we had the four deuce little niggas, and I love them little motherfuckers. You know, uh, we got the kitchen crips, you know, uh, them enemies too. You know, we got the 87 gangsters, you know, uh, 76 East Coast, my homeboys loved ones. You know, when we was at, you know, from Slauson all the way back down to Nay, dude, that's 5976 neighborhood. The Gardens Gang, Pico Rivera. You know, every race is with their own race. But the Mexicans and the whites is usually against the blacks whenever some shit happen and shit. So it's like, and the blacks, the blacks, the Crips and the Bloods, they, they against each other too. So it's like sometimes it'd be hard for all of us to just get together. But most, a lot of times we all do get together because it's like it's the Mexicans and the whites, whichever race has something against the blacks, they, they team up and they go against us. I mean, this city right here, this is, like I said, this is where it all originated, man. This is, this is uh, Moral Heights, East Los Angeles, eh? Home and, you know, gang capital, you know, gang capital right here. All started, you know, this is where my local locals are, man, with crazy people. It's a crazy life, man. You have to live vida loca, man. Live it out. That's know? what it's about is live vida loca. Do or die for your neighborhood, Do eh? or die for your and neighborhood. You know Blasted pretty bad. Like when I was gang banging, I got shot at and I never got hit. And uh, I got hit five times at one time with a 38. This was maybe seven years ago. And it's just, uh, just by luck that I even lived through that shit. And it was just, it was under the influence of PCP. It was a stupid thing. And uh, I walked into some guy's shop and uh, he thought I was gonna try to rob him. And I don't even really know why I walked in the fucking place. 
you my first gun and I tried to get it from you. You should start capping. I had so much PCP in me, that's probably the only reason I live. You know, I got stabbed up in Folsom by a Mexican. I remember the time, me and my little buddies, we went down there and did some shit, you know, on the punk ass villains. And we rolled up photo. <laughs> and my boy, I say, man, don't blast so they see the whites of their eyes. So I said, man, hold up, hold up. And so with a fool, I said, now bust them. And he bust on him with a 12-gauge shotgun, double barrel, you know. And we rolled off real slow, laughing. Another one bite the dust, fuck it, you know. And it wasn't like that, you know, dog. And that's what I live by. I woke up banging. Went to sleep banging. All during the day banging. My 9 millimeter 357. And at night time, my pump shotgun. That was me. I used to get a high just on seeing a shotgun to fire the motherfucker, you know. The more I did it, the sadder I got. I go back to the motherfucking penitentiary. Too much stuff. I, I got stabbed 21 times. One of those stab wounds is right here on my, on my neck, right here. And I have stabbed wounds all over myself. I've been, that was a gang related, and then also been uh, run over by gang members. And I, I was drugged under a, a 68 Chevy Lowrider drug. I drugged uh, uh, quite a long ways and I had my uh, ribs busted and you know internal bleeding and all that. I got shot right here, you know, got shot on my leg, guys from Gentown, you know, it came in right here, came out through the back, right there. They said I was not gonna be able to walk for like three months. I walked taking one, taking drugs, taking drugs, eh? But you know, I don't give a fuck what anybody else says, eh? Cause I'm gonna do what I wanna do, eh? If I, if I know I'm gonna make it through, I'm gonna make it through, you know? So I'm okay. And um, I lost, I've lost some plenty of homeboys, plenty of homeboys. Um, then died, then got killed. None of them died. They all got killed. And, um, I have a list with about at least, at least a hundred and some names of homeboys and got killed from '79 to '94. Um, this shot up. This shot up. Most of them got shot. Um, you know, they didn't got they got shot more than once and still went back out there. That last bullet, this last bullet, they just didn't make it. I had just put down my drink too. As a matter of fact, just a cold thing. I had just put my 357 down. And uh, and I went back out there to get a joint for my homeboy and uh, and the only thing I heard was shooting, you know. That niggas popped by six times. I catch one bullet, you know, um, it went through my shoulder, came out through my through my neck up here, you know, and, uh, and my mother asked me, you going to the hospital? I didn't want to go to the motherfucking hospital, you know, because it really it wasn't shit, you know, that motherfucker didn't kill me, you know, I'm just here to let you know you didn't kill me, you know, and I'm still here, still functioning, you know, uh, but I wanted to go to the hospital anyway, you know, they didn't do it for my arm in the slang, you know, and I got stabbed up, you know, on the upper part of my back and shit. Buy some old, them old punk ass Mexicans, you know, um, let them know I'm still here, you know, and I'm still walking and breathing, you know, better luck next time. When he shot me, he shot me twice in the stomach, and uh, I got the Highland Park after, but he shot me through the leg, almost got my dick, and uh, through the arm, came out here, and grazed me through the side, and uh, Luckily, nothing really serious happened out of that. You know, for us, gangbangers, anybody really, but if you're a gangbanger, you, you could get a fucking go quick. You know, if your homeboy wants to sell it for real cheap, you know, it depends. You know, you could get fucking, one time I bought a fucking, like, a, I think it was a 9 minute or clock for like 250 you know, and that was like clean. It was just motherfuckers that stole it. I don't know where, but they had stole it, but they needed money right away, so they sold it to me for that cheap and shit. Yeah, and I'm fucking, um, Guns, you could get them on the streets for, from fucking dope heads that do drugs. That motherfucker come out of here and cluck out their motherfucking, their fucking gun for about twenty dollar rock and shit. And you're coming up with about four or five hundred dollar worth of gun, man. That's a fucking good price, you know. The way I got shot was I went had a trip, went to TJ to party, and end up getting shot by some uh, niggers. And uh, the bullets entered. <laughs> Right around. <laughs>
right here, and then right here in the back, and then in my legs. But you can't see that because I didn't take off my pants. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're just too drunk. Niggas that want to fight, you know, but ha you know, hands toe to toe. So they had to break out with a gun, and uh, that's how it happened. You gotta be hard in order to, to, to gang bang and try to be something you know you wanna be. Cause you know what, it ain't all about just dressing. It's all about going out there and seeking and killing and making your neighborhood come up. You know, you what, know what I mean? It ain't a game, it's, a, it's familia. MC4, three, five, till I die. Since childhood, we're surrounded by violence, drug addiction, child molestation, rape, Anger, poverty. Where you grow up at, it's just like a vibe, man. It's like a vibe. You just get involved in the shit before you even know it. Before you even know it, you there, you in a gang and shit. You know what I'm saying? Nobody don't make you be in no goddamn gang. Um, it's like you hang around long enough, eventually you're going to be in the gang. You're going to be throwing up some sign and shit, you know? Oh, one of my little homeboys, the one that I give the guns to, that motherfucker pulled out the gun on them fools and I'm, I'm like a dummy, you know. The fools are walking, two of them were walking up and two in the corner, so I, I ran up to the both of them that were walking up and um, they were all penalty down, all gangster down, and um, I tried to run up and stop one of them right when I tried to get up to him. He just pulled out a 38 gun, a 38, and blasted me, shot me in the fucking um, stomach right in my abdomen. I got my heart from my barrio and all that, you know, but it's like back, back when I was like about 16 years old. I had a hyena, you know, her name was, you know, I had a hyena and everything, and I, you know, the hyena was about to have my baby and all that. And it's like sad to say, you know, I had so much love for my barrio that one day, I, I, you know, I used to take her down to my neighborhood and we used to go party and all that, day. Eh? And it's like, when I went to the park, when I went to go party with her, I was on my way to the 7-Eleven, you know, and my enemy neighborhood from school, they remembered me because I'd always throw in work at school and I'd always be talking so smack to them, you know. And it's like, we were walking to the store to go get some pistol, and when I went to go get some pistol, some enemies, you know, they rolled up, and, you know, they remembered me, oh, that's that vato right there, you know, that's him, eh? you know, he's from so-and-so from here and there, you know. And when they rolled up, they didn't even go, I told them my barrio, and they just, you know, they were aiming to shoot me, but I ended up losing my old lady and my baby in the long run, eh. Then people, you know what I'm saying, I see a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, get left for dead, man, you know what I'm saying, you know, we don't go powder. You know what I'm saying, you ain't gonna get no gunpowder up off, you ain't gonna get that, where they test your hands for no for no gunpowder, you know? Take them out, man. Quiet and easy, you know? Yeah, like right now in uh, all the neighborhoods from Riverside to San Bernardino to LA, somebody's put the word down and uh, they don't want Rasa killing Rasa. It's, you know, you know, I, I was tired of letting little punks tell me where I'm from. You know why? That's why I put it on my neck, because I'm proud of my barrio. See, I put white fence for you guys won't have to ask where I'm from. You would know, and if you got something crazy to do, out, you it. better do it, Essay, because you know what? I'll come out blasting your head, Essay. You know what? If you want to want some, step up. You'll get some. Michigan. I don't really get nothing unless I go out there and sweat bullets. And when I do go out there, they always tell me no. So I got to go back to resort to what I know how to do best. Jack, Rob, and Steel. You know, get your shit, keep my shit, and get your shit again. You know, that's just it. That's the bottom line. That's how my thinking is today. You know how you don't have to fucking pull a, pull a goddamn trigger. You know, it don't take much of a man to do that. You motherfucker really such a fucking man. You know, get in a boxing room with some motherfucker. And show how much of a fucking man you are. My first state prison uh, commitment was for a strong arm robbery. I was just, I just grabbed the dude by his neck, fucked him up a little bit behind the disco, circus disco in Hollywood. And then uh, did two years, got out, kept doing robberies, uh, started fucking with that crack shit. And uh, I robbed three stores in one night out in Lancaster, smoked up all the money. And that's what I just got out for right now. Well, I had a parole officer once upon a time, asshole. His name is, I don't even say his name, but anyway, his um, motherfucker told me that, and I was sprung on drugs, right? He told me he don't give a fuck if I, you know what I'm saying, bust my chest, you know what I'm saying, or right in jail, he gonna still get paid, you know what I'm saying, because he with the system. 
You know what I'm saying? And I was against the system. I still am. These right here, these is the, the uh, those fucked up buses, the, the transport buses. You know, these are buses that, that take you to prison and all that old type of shit. Buses you don't want to hard ass shit, man. It, 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 it irks me just to be standing while by one of these motherfuckers. I done been up in this motherfucker so many times and shit, but it feel good to be standing up out of here. I hate to leave jail. So I miss my homeboys up in that motherfucker, you know, because I know I'm going back out here with a gang of buses, you know. At least up in there, I know the motherfucker is real, you know, the mass majority of them. You meet friends that, I mean, you're locked up with them for years and years. And, I mean, my little homeboy I was locked up right now, we follow, he followed me to three prisons. So you meet friends, and it's like, when you leave, it's like, you know, you miss them guys. And my first time going to the county jail, I lied to get in there, you know, because to me it was more of a challenge. And this is the place I don't, if I can go straight to the pen, I probably wouldn't give a fuck about going to jail. But since I got to stop here and go through this county system, it just, I just don't want to do it no more. I, I, I can't take living up in this county and shit. I just can't, they don't feed you right. And the first thing in the morning when we go to breakfast, if you go to breakfast, you get your lunch. If you don't, well, you're assed out. You don't get a meal till you go to dinner. And fucking breakfast, you go, you say, you know, in the dining hall, which is divided, you know, like there's two halls here. On the other side is like mostly for busters, which is in the Daniels. And uh, this side is for the south, the right is for the south. And you know, where it comes in besides them. But, you know, we sit with our, our seats and kick it in our area. And the other ones kick in their area, you know, just for respect, you know. and. Uh, by going, you know, like, when our showers too here, they're different. We got like eight showers, no, about nine or ten showers. Like four of them is for us, for the South, and the other ones are for the, like, for the Blacks and the Mexican, the Border Brothers, and the um, Daniels, they share them. And we have our four over here, because, you know, that's ours. Real scary, I've been up in here plenty of times. Many a times. With the handcuffs and the, with, with your hands handcuffed, Feet handcuffs, it's fucked up. Can't run, if you're in an accident, you got to stay up in here. You got you got to die, you got to die. You got to die in the car, because the police are going to get out. When you're inside the prison, when you're inside the county jail, it's the earthquake, the police, if they run outside, they'll leave you up in there. We're under the gun tower, which is, all day the gun tower is on you. Every move you make is on you, you know. You fuck up, you know, they'll blast on you, you know, if it's a final yard, they'll blast one time just to, you know, get people to, you know, you get on their stomach, which get flat on your ass. You know, if you don't, well, you keep shooting to finally hit you or hit somebody else. Prison, man, is a, is a, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's just a warehouse, you know what I'm saying? It's a warehouse for the Chicanos and the Blacks. You know, that's, that's what it is. It's Chicano and the Blacks. But let me tell you one thing, man. If you're in it, you can't come out of it. It's like blood in and blood out. You join it, you gotta live for it, and you gotta die for it. I got shot right here back in 86. Right here you can see a little, like a little bullet here where it went. It went in and shit, I got this scar. I got the scar going all the way down to my leg. Down here, all the way up. You know, battle fucking wounds and shit. It's fucked up when you, you know, gotta go through this shit. When I, I was young, I was only 16 when I got blasted. Like part of initiation, you know, like when a fight against the wings, you don't ever get attacked. Bust open the cassette player, get the little motor out, use the headphones for wires, and use a Polaroid SX70 film. That's SX70, that's a neighborhood. On it. <laughs> use the film, the battery pack in the back, take that out, use that for a battery pack. And for needles, we use the pins, the little springs in them, just heat them up. You heat it up with the lighter and you straighten it out, sharpen it up on the floor. That's all you need. This is an Aztec shield from the Aztecas. It means internal warrior for the Mexican culture. No, I got these done in the county jail. These here, Pyro for life. You know what I'm saying? HHP, which stands for Hollywood Pyro. All this shit I got, these motherfucking tattoos I got on here are fucking real, man. I got this shit in prison. 
I first started one or two things, and I just kept batting. And uh, this is all by different people. I just during the four-year time, I waited till I got people that could usually match the um, the work of the first guy. And then I got all the women blended in. Got my Raiders girl right here, hardcore Raiders fan. Got the big ass ECG, five nine East Coast. I got this put in at the, the Hatchby. I got to put on all the Chino. Remember my homeboy Kitchen Mo, he supposed to got the KCG put on it, but he didn't, he parked out on me. You know, uh, I got the fly down the East Coast right here. I got this put on for my homeboy who died for me, you know. I got a black pride put right here while I, my first conviction. I had to hang with the blacks, hang with the blacks, you know, I really believe in that. I got the fly down on my back arms. Put on while I was in the motherfucking, uh, on the streets. I got the FNC put on my face while I was on the streets. I got my forearms dead while I was in 1400. With my biggest tattoo that I love is motherfucker one on my, on my chest, you know. My mama tell me to take it off, you know. I ain't taking the motherfucker off. I gotta keep my tattoo. I love my tattoo, you know. And I ain't taking it off for nobody, even the one in my face, you see what I'm saying? Fuck them, this is me, you know. Either you like it or you don't, and I really don't give a fuck if you don't like it. You know, but uh, I love my big tattoo on my chest. I get to fuck with these motherfuckers out here on the streets, you know. Let them know, let these justice know, you know. Uh, if you're gonna do it, do it all the way. If not, get the fuck up out of it. You know, this how far I got to go with mine, you know. And I'm real about my motherfucking crypt. And I like my tattoos and I love them. This is Southern California. This is, Southern California. This is it. The Southern United Race. The Southern Nattel. This right is here. us. So all that other bullshit you've been hearing on Channel 4 News and all that Connie Chung shit, <laughs> that ain't happening. This is your righteous shit right here. Oh, my lips, huh? Hey, I got tattoos too, I just got one that's not school. It's to return California from the schools to the highest standard. <laughs> hey, my Mickey Mouse. Thanks. Well, but I like this trip right here. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Let's cut that one there. See? Is that fun? Yeah, I need to get this one finished. For Keep choking the pot now. Hey. We was tweaking one night, the, the homie Stymie did it, you know, it took like around seven hours work, but it got done, right, and I got one on my back too, but it's got, you see, you said it, no, my doctor up right now, did that one, on my neck, um, that means trust no man, trust like trust no one. I went to prison, started getting my tattoos. I got this when I was only 17 years old. This is my neighborhood because I believe that I died for my neighborhood. You know, I went all the way for my neighborhood. That's why I put it on me for people won't have to ask me where are you from. You know, that way they won't they won't be dumb enough to ask because I got it in my neck in my neck. You know, and uh, you know I got these in the joint because I did five years. I got this girl. I got this genie lamp, which means good luck. You know that. That's that, you know, when you rub the lamp and you ask for something and you get your wish. So I put the genie lap there. I put my little girl's name there because, you know, I wish that she could come back to me, you know. I was about 12 years old and I got my first tattoo. My name right there. And the second one was probably my neighborhood right there. 70s and shit. Right there. And then started practicing on myself. That's why this is a little shammy and stuff. I do good now, though. And then when I went to YA... I started doing my own tax. My last name started tacking on myself. I did all this except this. This is the only tech I didn't do on me. All these I did. Oh, that thing. My back. Oh. It's hanging there. Michigan 13, Malo. Control a todo. And I've done this one here in the hole. You know, i done this one here in the hole when I was you know, in, the, in, the, in prison. This is what we live for, see that brown pride, ese? You wanna know what it's about? You gotta get into what it's about, cause it ain't just about writing it down right there, man. You guys gotta live it, you guys gotta die for it if you guys wanna earn that, you know what I mean? You don't just write it on yourself, you gotta earn it, you gotta get your stripes, man. 
So yeah, I, I got the, I got my homeboy a pattern. He's gonna get it all done. It's all faded. He just wanted to attack before he got busted. For everybody knows that he was for where he was from. You know, he's down for his. Eh? It's gonna be fixed. You know, it's gonna be better. He's gonna put the lion sleeps tonight. You ever heard the song the Quiet Village? The lion sleeps tonight. We get the lion sleeps tonight. We put a big old lion. Put Quiet Village refund. We get more tabs on his neck. This is what you get. This way we, we get it's our heart. There's eh? plenty more where this can come from. I'm get all over and get in my head. I want to get in my back right here when I box. I started getting tattoos when I first hit the YA system, which is called Youth Authority. Which, if you guys don't understand, is fucking for young ass motherfuckers like me when I was young, trying to you know earn strides, trying to have, you know make myself, you know like, you know notice to the homeboys and shit. That I was trying to prove myself, really tell you the truth. You know my barrio is Compton Barrio, most of the tantas, which is Compton Barrio, seven O's, and um. My hand too, the same thing, you know, my little brother Capone from the Tiny Logs from the 70s did this and um, my homeboy Flaco did this in YA, he was my celly and um, he also do these little oracles which is little oracles, motherfuckers be thinking they're little KKKs and shit LS stands for Los 70,000 in Spanish and then I got this for the lover in you which is for all them babies out there and shit and then I got this, um, my mom's name, Victoria with some praying hands to always watch her when I'm in this fucked up system and shit, and some bitches, you know, just, you know, little hoes and shit. My neck shot, I got this back in 80. Hey, that was my first tattoo on my neck. You know, every in my life, I would, I would say to myself, I would never get nothing in my fucking neck, but you know, motherfuckers, you know, that's the only hearsay and shit. But anyways, um, you know, I trip on these motherfuckers that say, you know, there's a lot of motherfuckers more tacked down than me, you know, but they're dedicated, you know. Like me, you know, I'm dedicated to my body and shit, but, they're like fucking super dedicated. They got that shit in the forehead and all that. But then you know what made me think to dedicate myself? You know, when I put that shit right here in the back, man, that's you know, really called dedication, you know? Accidental overdose, that's all it was. Shouldn't have happened, but things happen. It happens all the time. It don't and, uh, happen just in this race. It happens in white yeah, cracks. Yeah, but it's just an accident right? that happened, and we're just trying to just... You know, because things are tough. It costs a lot of money to bury people. You know what I'm saying? So this is, this is, this we might not make a dent. I mean, but, you know, $500 is $500 that we didn't have before. You know what I'm saying? Going towards giving them a proper barrel and a decent barrel. And that's basically all we're here for to give. You know what I mean? Just to try to just help the family out and, you know, lay my homeboy to rest in peace. With some respect. You know what I mean? If you banging, that's where you going. Folks on my Pelican Bay. And, um... It ain't no, it ain't, it ain't no joke up in there. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people can run around here. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and they, they you know, they don't do all, all that horse playing and all that. It ain't all about that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's serious. It's real serious to where, you know, you can lose your life. You know? You never know. Like when you come in the joint, when you first come up in the reception, they ask you to sign this paper. It says, you know, you know, what you want your body delivered to when you, you know, like motherfuckers, you, you know. You sign that paper, and that's where your bodies don't go when you, because you know, they ain't promising you're gonna live here alive because that's the first thing they tell you where you want your body flowing to, where you want your body, you know, when you die, you know. So that's what, I, you know, that's fucking, don't you guys gotta think about that when they tell you that, like, oh man, what I got myself into now, fuck, I gotta sign this paper, and you know, if I happen to get killed in there, well, there goes my body in the body back. So that's why a lot of people, especially what I was, you know, like, Right here in Sonic that I hear over there in Folsom, they got like a little hill where if you don't got no people to take care of you or nothing, they'll just bury you on the hill and that's it. The day I was released, I was released with my PIA money at $600 and did the opposite of what I was telling myself I would do. Went straight to the neighborhood, bought an eight ball of coke, bought a gram of stuff, started partying, ran to the motel. One of the guys I got released with stuck with me. We got kicked out of four motels the first night, and I overdosed on heroin and coke. Ended up in the hospital, almost died. We smoke gas gun, you know, we do speed. Some of us do crack, you know, there's all the drugs out here in Whittier. And you tell the cops out here, you know, who they hate most is Whittier, in Whittier Quiet Village, you know? A lot of kids think they're bad, and they, they start getting the drugs, and they start shouting, they start coming up real quick, you know? You know what it is? This is the kind of area where you make money fast, and, and it's a fast life, you it's know? Power, eh? It's and power, it's power in your hand. Yeah, and I see a lot of busted ass motherfuckers out here, you know? They just dress the part. They ain't really worth it. They ain't really with it, you know? They really ain't with it. I see a gang of motherfuckers out here, you know, uh, they gonna get, 
get took out just to be getting took out because they want to look the part, you know? Got that booze in their hand. You know what I mean? Go buy, a go buy a pair of khakis, some Nikes, and uh, get a little tattoo done on them. And, hey, you know what I mean? I'm a gang member. Got the Tigers, which to me is just kids that are too scared to really gang bang. I don't know, like that writing on the wall with them taggers and all that shit. No, I ain't, no, that's all new shit to me. You know, I come home and man, they got all these different type of gangs and I'm like, man, what the fuck is them? Who is what? I, you know what I'm saying? And damn, when did they come? You know what I'm saying? I come home and they got brand new little young homeboys, you know what I'm saying, on the neighborhoods and shit. You know what I'm saying? Running around, you know, they want to be like, Oh, that's my OG homeboy, right, right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Who the fuck is this? You know? Man, get up out of my motherfucking face, because I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? They run up to me, I know you, I know you. You don't know me, fool. Now I seen a gang of motherfuckers come up here that really wasn't the body. They just really wasn't the body. They just dressed the part, you know? And talked the gang of shit, you know? Behind them closed doors, you know? Where the motherfucker really at? You find out where you really at, you know? And I found out what I really was at, you know. So when I found out I was at, you know, it's about the cripping, period. Don't just dress like it or don't just think you're, you know what, you got to live it, man. You got to live it. You got to know what it's about. Because it if you ain't don't know what it's about in your heart, man, you're just a punk, a little shavala, a little sissy, something that you could never, man, you could, man, I'll see you walking in and I know you're a fake. You know what, I'll go over there and take your pants off and you know what, I'll take your chains if you got chains, brother. Because you know what, we could tell when you're for real. And I'm sitting there looking at the motherfucking news, you know, uh, and I see this cripping, you know, and it's, and it's slobbing, you know, all over, you know, Georgia, uh, Sacramento, Oklahoma, what, St. Louis, Kansas City. How about they cripping? You know, uh, and they ain't even been down up here in South Central. Don't ain't, ain't really never paid, ain't paid shit to nothing. Claiming a set. They don't know nothing about claiming a set, putting in some work that they don't know nothing about. Know nothing about my dead homeboy. Don't even know their name. Just heard of their name. Motherfucker, I feel they busters, you know. Come down to South Central and see do you really want to be about this. Did I see some little white folks, some little cracker dudes, you know? Holler about some crip this and some crip that. How the fuck can you be a crip? You see what I'm saying? I don't know, that, I just don't cut with that, you know. You ain't no motherfucking crip. You ain't no motherfucking blood. Stay where you belong at, you know, with your people, you see what I'm saying? Because this is a world you know that you don't understand. I man, I became mad because I be seeing all these fucking bogus ass fucking cholos, wannabes all over the fucking United States, man. They even got that part thing, they even got them in fucking Russia now, they motherfuckers. Everybody want to dress up and think they're gangsters. What is this, man? It's the fucking 90s, man. We, you know, this shit started back in the fucking early 30s, I think, 20s, man. Back in East LA, I think, back when the fucking Cholo suits, suits and all them fools were game. But now, you got this shit spraying all over, man. Fucking Washington, fucking Seattle, fucking um, Louisiana, fucking Florida, you know, all over. You know, you got this shit spraying out. And that shit's funny, man, because when you hear motherfuckers, oh, I'm from over here, from this and that. Well, what? Where you from? Oh, I'm from fucking, um, uh, Michigan, man, what? Damn, you know, down over there in um, Mississippi and all that shit. Oh, man, damn, you're a gangbanger? Yeah. And then you got all these motherfuckers, you know, saying they're from here and that, which motherfuckers never, 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 man, I ran into a guy one time, I was living out in San Diego, I ran into a guy talking about he was from Compton. Motherfucker never been to the place, never even seen Compton, you know? You know what, I see a lot of bullshit out here, and these niggas really they ain't no doing, they ain't, they ain't no cripping. They ain't doing no cripping, they just about, you know, dope dealing and all the other shit, you know, how many hoes they can fuck. Then they wonder why they homeboys is getting smoked. And I wonder why the niggas ain't going back and doing nothing. Just let me know they hoes, you know, gang up. And there's hoes everywhere you go. So I got to sort out my weeds, you know. And I didn't hang with a whole lot of my homeboys all the way from far down East Coast. And I didn't hang with a lot of them niggas. Cause a lot of them niggas was hoes too. And them niggas know who I'm talking about too. And I don't give a fuck about what they think, you know. Because I'm still left dog and I'm still gonna do what the fuck I have to do on a daily basis. I don't take no bullshit from nobody, but I respect everything. Now you disrespect me, it's on. You know, I didn't get it. However far you wanna go, we can go. It don't make me no difference. This is what dedication's about, you know? Right here, my brother Guy right here, man. This is 
this is this is something that shows you that this ain't nothing that this is for real that it ain't just a game my banging go deep you know see i was the crib god when you lay down to pray you pray to me i forgive you all your sins that's how deep my banging go it's not what people think you know it's from generation to generation you know little fucking you know when we got kids our little kids dress up like us they see what they see they dress up and what they know that's all they know they want to keep they want to try the same thing and that's why it goes on and on it's a cycle you know and you know i don't never think it's going to stop because you know the way society you know the way people are in the generation now it's all fucked up you know they're trying to get us we're we're trying, big, eh? we're we're trying to get eh? us out of the streets yeah. eh? before it's too late before we take over the streets eh? Taking they think over they got power little, eh? but they don't eh? We're smarter than them. We're gonna hey, beat them hey, at their own game. Ain't hey, no play. gang or no cops or no blacks or no whites. Now they ain't gonna say nothing. They ain't gonna stop us. They cause it's gonna go on and on from generation to generation. We got little youngsters. We're recruiting now. They're gonna be the same way we are, but ain't fucking crazy. If you know anybody that's involved that might be involved in gangs or, or in drugs or just uh, looking for help. Uh, you're able to direct them to one of our many, many churches that we have, and now we're nationwide, we're worldwide, uh, and you're able to direct them. We have rehab homes for men and women practically in, in different parts of the world. Um, we have also, you know, if they need help to get out of drugs or gangs, we're, we're able to help them. The phone number is uh, 526-0633. Area code 213.